Hello and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is Zach Christetter. I'm an Ableton Certified Trainer. And today I want to talk a little bit about dynamic EQs, which is something people often associate with more expensive third-party plugins, but I want to show you how to create dynamic EQs with just the Ableton Live EQ8. Uh, so it's a free way to do this if you want to add a little bit of motion with your EQing, if you want to clear up a little bit of space in your mix, if you want to make it so that you can have multiple sounds in the same frequency range and hear them all at the same time. Uh, this is a cool little subtle technique you can use to achieve that. So before we dive into that, I do want to let you know if you are enjoying the content on the channel, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of YouTube stuff. It is all greatly appreciated. Also, you can check out the Patreon if you want to help support the channel and help me keep making these videos. So to start this off, uh, we have two tracks here. We're going to have just like a pad sound and a drum beat. Sounds like that. Now, uh, before we start this, I also want to let you know that normally I wouldn't do this with drums and a pad sound. I would most likely do this with something more like vocals and a pad sound um, because they're both going to live in the, kind of like the same frequency range. However, uh, I wanted something that had a lot of transient so we could really see and hear how this is going to work. So keep that in mind as we go through th this example. So what we want is we want the EQ on the pad sound to move up and down based off of specific incoming frequencies from our drum beat. So it's kind of like a side chain, but it's more specific and more precise. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an EQ8 and we're going to put it on our pad sound. And we're also going to go to our drum beat and we're going to put an EQ8 and an envelope follower right next to each other. We're going to take these two sounds and we're going to hit Command G, put them inside a, a rack together. We're going to open up our chain area. We're going to right click and hit Create Chain. So this chain right here is going to be our dry chain. So there's going to be no effects, nothing on it there. And this chain here is going to be our EQ trigger, or you can call it whatever you want. So the EQ trigger, we're also going to mute this because we're going to be using this envelope follower to start moving our EQ on our pad. So nothing's coming through here. We're just receiving a signal in. The volume of our drum beat is then triggering the envelope follower that we can then map to any parameter on any track. The EQ8 is going to be here so we can pick specific frequencies to trigger our sidechain. So we'll deal with this in just a moment, but that's what that's there for. We're going to take the envelope power, we're going to hit the map button. While this is blinking, we're going to go over to our pad sound. We're going to pick one of our EQ bands, whichever one you want, really, and we're going to map this to the gain. So now, as the volume of the drum beat goes up and down, the volume of this specific EQ band is going to go up and down. And we can see this. So we can hear it moving and we can see it moving up and down. A couple issues right now. It's starting at a low volume and then going up when the drums are happening. So we're going to go back over to envelope flower. And here we can see we have a minimum range and a maximum range. We can just invert these. So if I go up to 100% as the maximum and 0% as the minimum, or opposite way, now it'll go down each time there's a drum beat. So it's working more the way we want. However, it's going all the way up to plus 12 decibels, which is not what we want, and then going down. So what we're going to do is, once again, go back over to our envelope flower. We're going to change the maximum amount here to be 50%. So now it's going to start in the middle and then go down. A bit more subtle now, but it's accomplishing what we want it to do. So from here, now we have a bunch of options in, in terms of tweaking this to our liking. So we can change the filter frequency. To change where that motion is happening. We can also change the Q or the resonance to make this either really precise on specific frequencies or much wider. So up to you how you want to adjust those two settings, whatever is going to work best for your song. Uh, a lot of times you want this to be fairly subtle, so you don't need this to be like super huge you know, resonance. You want to kind of pick a specific area and then you want to find whatever frequency your original sound is in. Other than that, we can also tweak things like adjusting the minimum range here. So at 0%, it's going all the way down to negative 12 at the maximum value. So if you don't want it to go that far, if you want it to be more subtle, we can adjust the range here and now it won't go as far down. Like that. We can also adjust the values down here. So we can adjust the gain. Um, more gain means more volume is being sent to the envelope flower, which means you're going to get more dynamics or more ch change in dynamics. It's already pretty high right now, so I'm not going to change that quite yet. 
We can also change the rise and the fall. Rise is going to get a, a little bit of attack. And fall is going to give it a little bit of decay. So it will also smooth it out. So if you see it jumps up and down a bunch, you can adjust the fall. And you get more of that kind of like smooth curve instead of it kind of jittering as it goes up and down. Another thing we can do, and this is why the EQ8 is here and why this rack is here, is we can pick spe specific frequencies from our original sound. So if it was a vocal, we could pick like the main part of the vocal, or in this case, if I want to just like say the high frequencies to trigger the envelope follower, we can see it's not doing as much, but only those high frequencies are going to be triggering this moving up and down. So it's a bit more subtle here. If it's too subtle, this is where the gain control comes in really handy. I can then turn this up to make this more obvious from either very specific frequencies that's too much wherever you want. And the reason we have our dry chain here is that that way, if I am uh, also listening to the drum beat, we don't hear that EQ change in drum beat. We still hear the full drum beat. Uh, so having this EQ here combined with the gain, rise and fall, the amount controls here, as well as the frequency and resonance here, uh, give me a lot of control for exactly how that EQ is shifting and moving up and down to create little shifts and dynamics on specific frequencies from specific frequencies, uh, which I think is a cool technique. It's not something I use all the time. You don't need to feel like you need to do this for all your tracks in your songs when you're mixing. But if there are two sounds that are really important in your song, say for example, vocals and a, a melody or a chord progression that are really powerful in your mix. Um, you can use this to make it so your vocals cut through or your melody cut throughs the chords, as long as they're living in kind of like the same or similar frequency ranges. So it's cool, cool technique. I think it's really interesting. I think it's worth checking out. People often associate that with having, you know, more fancy, expensive plugins. And here you can do it for free using the devices that come with live. So that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed watching that. If you did, please let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see you again in another video. Thanks for watching.